right, we'll call the meeting to order. 32. Well, first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Anything that we need to amend, are we good to approve as is? I'm good. Good to approve as printed. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Good, good. We have no appointments this evening, so we'll just go right straight to public comment. So if there's anything that's not on the agenda, which the agenda is very short <laughs> um, item-wise, but could get lengthy, but we have the budget discussions and then the town meeting warning, which will pretty much be our agenda for the next couple of meetings, mm -hmm. give or take an item. So yep. um, so if there's anything out there that uh, doesn't pertain to one of those um, items, uh, now is your chance. I'll go. Paul's gone. All right. I don't see anybody online. Here. Hey, here we go. <laughs> After much discussion and debate and conversations with my family and friends and other officials whose opinion I respect and, uh, and value, I've decided not to seek another third term on the Bethel Select Board when my current term ends in March of 2023. It was not an easy decision. I've enjoyed the challenges of being a board member and I'm very proud of all we've accomplished over the past six years. It's been my pleasure and privilege to have worked with a fantastic group of board members, uh, including also Mo Brigham and Kyle Russell and our incredible town manager, Therese Kirby. Uh, I'll certainly miss the discussions and disagreements and consensus we built dealing with the business of the town. I would encourage anyone who's interested in this open seat to start attending select board meetings, uh, either in person or via Zoom or via phone. Um, also, all the select board uh, meetings are videotaped and are available for public viewing on the Orca Media website. Um, I'm not going anywhere. I'll still be involved in town government in some way, shape, or form. I've already been <laughs> contacted by uh, other folks that are interested. Um, and I'll be speaking a little bit more at town meeting about my time here and whatnot. So uh, there'll be a letter in the Herald this week also um, announcing this. And, um, and that's about it. Thank you very much. We appreciate your service. Yep. Six years. Now you're open to run for the school board seat. So well, that's, <laughs> what I, that's what I mean. It's, uh, <laughs> you endeavor. Does, it, does it pay well? <laughs> it's the same. Comes with plenty of oh, time. <laughs> Conversation is a little different, but yeah. So, I mean, as we all know, I mean, sitting on any board is, you know, it takes a lot of time, um, you know, and, and, you know, we like to thank Paul. Paul's been on not just the select board, but many other boards that are in affiliated to the select board mm -hmm. over the years. So yeah, he also comes in every week as either signing off on payroll or accounts payable. And so he keeps a good handle on, on those things. And, you know, BCA chair, trustee of public funds has been your liaison to two rivers on the social services committee. And, you know, so mm -hmm. there's a lot a lot to it so now you just got to figure out how to make up that lost revenue yeah all <laughs> um, right so that you guys can make it through the cold winter <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> no removal the be peace fine. and quiet he's be gonna fine. be like oh, yeah oh, no I, it's, it's just gonna be a different some different aspects yeah. you know it just won't now be. he'll be sitting in the audience see now it's a whole other uh, harassment. <laughs> a lot more harassment then. that's right now we can bitch and moan and yeah. not have to worry about it yeah all right. <clears throat> all right all right any any other comment that may be out on the net nobody else here in person fix here no, I said nobody else. Oh, well, I was like, besides us? I'm like, yeah. hey, I don't think so. Lenny? Nope. Okay. Well, nope. He's shaking his head. No. Okay. Pause there, maybe. I don't think so. Nope. Okay. Um, Here are none. We will move forward. So uh, we'll continue our discussion in regards to the budget. So there's a couple 
things. I just received today the updated numbers from uh, insurance from VLCT passive. So those might be tweaked a little bit um, in the insurance column, but not in this draft. Um, I, I got them today. I was going through it, the whole spreadsheet to sort out insurance. So that might change a little bit. Um, I I don't remember if I made any other changes. Obviously, I gave you the information from um, Steve Webster, excuse me, and um, for White River Valley Ambulance because you had a question about that. Mm -hmm. So Steve provided you with a bunch of information. I had forwarded you this spreadsheet, but then I included it in the packet. So my number and his number don't match exactly. So I need to look at his numbers again. Um, yeah, I noticed normally, that. well, normally I take his actuals for six months and then I estimate an increase for the remaining six months. But in one of the pages of his spreadsheet, it looked like maybe he did the same thing. So I just want to make sure. It, uh, and may, I didn't have a chance to get with you. I apologize. But that's okay. When I went through the details of, of the White River Valley Ambulance, I came up with about a, it was just under a 7% increase from last year. Yep. But your budget shows obviously yeah because he was I, more than that i think he had 21 yeah because he had i was looking at his um he was saying you know i like i said i i saw his spreadsheet after where he's talking about his optional monthly payments by town for the six months following mm -hmm. december so there was seventy six thousand. let's get to the yeah so Anyways, I just need to go through his numbers again, but that's fine. We're still waiting. You have an appointment next week at seven with a recreation committee. So that'll answer what they're going to be looking for. So mm -hmm. I'll update the budget and the warning about White River Valley. But what I did like was he did a very nice page to explain to you where his increases were. And it really looks like, you know, he's, they're battling some of the same things we are. Yeah. Um, Looks like know. they definitely had the, uh, the insurance stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and they did do an um, increase of um, and either they pay had, rates, wages, and salaries. And it also looks like either maybe they had some employee turnaround. Could be. Because they drastically on health insurance went from, you know, they, they went up quite a bit on their health insurance, which, which tells me that they, yeah, it was more than just a percent increase that maybe somebody came on that had a family plan that Could maybe be. was a single before or something. Oh, yeah. A couple of those, you know. Because it's 9.8%. Yeah. yeah. They were at 21.6% Um, because the board had approved a 25% wage increase. Mm. So then, yes, they were. They also workers comp, you know, which payroll taxes, obviously, that's just a big function of increasing payroll. But I had came up with a their budget overall was up a hundred and hundred and eleven thousand dollars, which we make up fifteen percent of 15. that. Fifteen point four seven percent. So yeah. that's where yep. what you had budgeted and what he has in there. Right, exactly. So was it's quite a bit different. So I don't know what well, on page four it says the each town's contribution projection for twenty twenty three and that number was 139 and change something like that yep 139 824 is and what i had and I think, then i think yep Teresa had like 170 something i did i did because i took his or like i said i took his original number and then i have to guesstimate what yeah, his increase yeah, is going to be the following yeah, year yeah. but i didn't hadn't seen until i went through it again he does on one of his pages a, little, a blurb about future so We'll sort out that. I just wanted you to see why he had mm -hmm. they had such an increase, but really just fighting the same fight we are. Um, I don't think we made any adjustments to the revenue budget last time. Um, you can see on the bottom of the revenue page, down at the bottom, because I you need to make some decisions about, which will be a discussion tonight about the sheriff, constable, what you're going to do there. Um, so I did... But you could see a number at the bottom of the revenue page, additional for library, the 27500 I did hear from Lisa and they want to move forward with that, leaving some money in the budget and then voting for the additional appropriation. Mm -hmm. um, and um, expense wise, I think we had uh, the road for as a dumpster now and I had to clarify um, some software changes. So not big, but I think the biggest conversation tonight is should probably be what you want to do about the constable budget and chris and i met with the 
what do you want to call him? Sheriff elect Ryan Palmer. So maybe Chris can give you the update on our conversation with him. And then obviously you need to make yeah. a decision so we can sort out the budget. I mean, I think, so yeah, so Teresa and I met with, with him, um, I don't know, last Tuesday or Wednesday or something yeah. like that. Um, so I think some of, some of the challenges, I, I, he's got some plans to try to get into the smaller communities and join several small communities together to, to do, um, some enforcement, um, he has a goal, but I don't think he has the infrastructure currently. He's working on trying to train people and things like that. So I think even he'd thrown out some numbers, so uh, which is challenging. We told him that you know what we kind of looked like in our budget if we went to a certain number, which we had been talking in the seventies. What would that look like? You know, he basically told us if we did that, then that would look like uh, a person twice a week full time. Um, um, but what he would really like to get to would be more of like a full-time, um, which the price on that is considerably higher, um, 125,000. So and I, I had yeah. been thinking about a little bit, I mean, what we have right now is, you know, I was breaking it out. So, you know, what we have been budgeting is 40 some odd thousand dollars a year, which is supposed to be 20 hours a week. Um, and obviously, like we talked about last year, and we've had some discussion since, is the challenge we have is, and maybe we were spoiled for a little bit, is it's it's very, very hard to find a part-time constable. You know, at one point we shared with two other communities, and that isn't really happening anymore. Right. And all these uh, law enforcement agencies are short, and they're able to offer much greater than what we can. So it's hard to attract anybody. So what we, and so we budget, we budget for 20 community hours at 40 some odd thousand, but what we're really getting right now is about, let's say on average is three or four hours a week um, worth of right. time. Yeah. So the, now the challenge we have as a community is right now, I don't want to say free, but right now, we have a constable that, or constables that, you know, use two or three hours a week, right? It's definitely not what we've, what we want, but all the, all the, um, the calls that go in are being feathered through, you know, VSP or the sheriff's department or somebody right now that we, let's say, don't pay for directly. Right. Now, if you go to the sheriff's department, what happens now is you now pick up 100% of those calls. So, and I don't like to use the word free, but so once the sheriff's department is on board and you have time with them, if they're in your community for two or three days a week, they pick up 100% of your calls. For so, those two or three days. Right. So, so what you're doing essentially now is you're kind of paying for services that you kind of already had um without directly paying for it yeah um just not getting the coverage yeah the community yeah absolutely i mean that's, that's well that could be a very big and, deal and i think i think the discussion where we went with it was i think we clearly have seen over the last couple of years that there have been th some things in and around the community that maybe we had gotten to a decent point that is now starting to revert back you know we're starting to see a little bit more theft for vandalism um there's some maybe suspicious activities that are going on at different points and different times yeah. um and on the flip side of that is we are we're so used to having vermont state police being right there for us and i think one thing we have to talk about as a community is is with how short they are now. I mean, and we saw the, the individuals there that came in at the middle of the year talking about their um, domestic um, issue that they had with that individual and how it took like 45 minutes to get somebody to the place is, you know, it's not like the old days where the call goes in and VSP is right here and we have a trooper in town in seconds, right? Now it's 
half an hour or, you know, and I, I don't want to say we've gotten lucky, but, you know, at, at some point in this community, we are going to have a, an event, right? right. Um, or events, you know, mm -hmm. we haven't had really any of those big events, but if we do have an event, you know, do we want to be proactive or reactive to that event, right? And, but our options are very limited. It's either keep budgeting for something that we know that we can't fill, change, right? Or as a community, we have to say it's going to cost us X amount more to get a professional service um, and what that looks like, you know. And now, if we want to get a professional service that looks like 20 hours a week, then at the sheriff's department, it's going to double our current budget. It'll be 125,000. You know, well, just, well, what I'm saying that two or three days a week, like that, he said a minimum of 75 or 80. Thousand. Yeah. I mean, but, but again, he doesn't you. have the infrastructure yet. I mean, we pick up the call uh, phone today and say, we want to do that starting next month. And he doesn't have all those pieces together yet. Right. Uh -huh. He's sending, he's, I think he told us he was sending six people to the academy, um, maybe starting in March, to either be trained up or either they're part-timers going to full-timers or people mm -hmm. going to part-time. I don't know. He said that he obviously he had spoken with Rochester, but has no commitment yet from Rochester. They're looking at either them or maybe Addison County sheriffs. Um, he did also tell us that um, you know, obviously there's some things up in the air with Orange County because both counties have new sheriffs. So, um, you know, I think it's just a matter of what, what do you want? I mean, you could have your own, you could hire a police officer to work full time and that would, for a salary would probably be 75, 80,000. And then you'd have to add everything else on top of it. But with that comes a lot of responsibility about making sure that they're fully trained, that they're up with all their, you know, requirements and and all that where so i think at this point you either you're going to stay the status quo which you know you can't fill um there oscar does the best he can but he has a full-time job in royalton and they are also short-staffed so you either stay the status quo you could go to seventy-five thousand a year guarantee yourself at least two days a week of somebody being here um or you pony up one hundred and twenty-five thousand. And you have someone here in almost full time. So two days a week doesn't mean anything to me. I mean, yeah. is it 6 yeah. a.m. till 2? Is it midnight to 8? You don't uh, get to call the shots, I don't think. I well, think if I'm going to pay that kind of money, I might want to have a little input. I think that it was 24 hours, two 12-hour yeah, I mean, shifts maybe? I mean, or, yeah, or how you explain it to us is yeah. it's, it's 24-hour service. So, so if... If you have two days worth of service, it's so 24 40. hour service. No, it's 24 period, 24 hours period. Right. Either you're going to get it, it doesn't a necessarily mean like shifts, a couple four hour right. shifts or a couple 12 hour shifts. And they will have direct, you know, they could be in Bethel, I'll make it up on Tuesday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. could be their, you know, they work their 10 hour days, but they could be in a surrounding community on Wednesday. Or, or, you know, or picking up a night shift in Randolph or something, and they will respond to a call. He, uh, yeah, he also said that he did his goal eventually is to be is to be, you know, full time. So he's not just like 6am to 6pm so that they did nights and Janice, Ryan Palmer had spoken with Janice Punger and Janice called me and she's in favor of the whole 125,000. She especially feels like at night, there's things, you know, that happen and we don't have coverage and um, so I know she was in favor of going to the bigger number. And gives you four, uh, 24 hours. What kind of coverage you get for 125? That quickly in my mind, that's another 18 hours. Well, that would give you full coverage in, in the community. The, the difference is, is it with 125,000, that is him employing a full-time officer in your town. I mean, it would, they would still work other I mean, I, I don't think he, they're going to be here seven. They're not going to be here seven days a week. They're for well, I mean, he, he talked about, you know, mm -hmm. not going to be here at eight, nine o'clock at night either. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that I think it's very difficult when you have two sheriff elects because they have budgets that are going to be passed right in March. They take over in February if they have people going to be trained, um, you know, 
what is he ha- he doesn't even take over the staff until february and then i mean right I now just, we'd be like lucky here is tough i mean if we wanted to do this i think mm-hmm. you know between him coming on and getting people trained you're probably talking july or august of next year at the earliest that you would even see a transition like that um i think one thing that Teresa and i kind of talked about afterwards of going through it is maybe trying to stick similar to the budget we have had and maybe try you know we know right now that we're not gonna well pay or get coverage for the budget we do have um so maybe we could strategically use some of that money to have the sheriff's department come in for a period of time and see if we like it um you know if we do have forty thousand dollars in budget do we do we try to get a a one day a week that they come in and see how that goes or, you know, on a trial period. Um, but I think we're kind of ca- caught in a crossroads of the, you know, the old ways of constables have kind of phased out, at least right now with, oh. with everybody shorthanded and last, yeah. you know, unless you get a special individual that, you know, maybe is on the end of retiring or doesn't really want to pick up full shifts. Um, but the other thing too is, you know, that we've gotten kind of lucky is, you know, is the liability that comes along with either having your own officer or constable. So um, there's that liability that we, that we take on as well as a community. If you have another identity that, you know, if you contracted with the sheriff's department or VSP or somebody else, and at least they take on that liability. Mm -hmm. Granted, the town always has a little bit of liability, but but they most of it's off They're here. Like naming everybody. But right. what do you think? Well, I mean, have you guys heard? Well, I see, you know, there's, but there's also times that Oscar, from what I understand, Oscar does patrol work and whatnot and doesn't charge the time to us for. Sure. I mean, when he's driving through, I mean, certainly he goes from Brandon to Royalton and so I don't think he charges. If Royalton time. manages to, get another officer i'm sure they're looking you know they're in the same situation they're looking too and if that relieves a little of his time that that's another option also right um we never have enough coverage i mean you could have somebody full time i mean this stuff that goes on this town's been going on for a long time and it's probably going to continue but i can't see jumping the budget that much for that little amount of coverage. It's a I mean, it's basically, choice. it's a lot more for for maybe what we're getting now as far as coverage, maybe a little bit more than what we're getting now for coverage. Mm-hmm. And it's a big jump. Yeah, and 125 crazy. is. I know. Is, I was, uh, we were shocked when we heard know, that just, number. I mean, I understand his point. He's trying I'll, to build I'll a- never fly. Yeah, he's trying to build a- basically build the department so if he could yep. get a few towns to 125,000 give him a full person but they're not just going to be in Bethel so he's trying especially if he lands contracts around but I mean it's, well, it, it's it, but you're right I hadn't thought about that if if Loretta is lucky and, and chief you know Stalnicker and makes a hire then you're right that would free Oscar up and I hadn't thought of it Eric? I two. last I knew there was two James Oscar and just oh, okay I didn't know about James well they have three now what my what I'm what I the question in my mind is okay South Wellington for all intents and purposes about the same size now. sure uh they have more bars mm-hmm. they have more opportunity um, a big law school where they have the the right uh um group of people that might cause issues with drugs and whatnot maybe more so maybe, maybe. anyway they got three people yeah. you got zero i know <laughs> well, i don't understand how they can you know what are we doing that's so good or they or, well, what's going on here it doesn't make any sense to me yeah well, i think that they've i mean i don't know royalton's history but i assume royalton's had a police department for a long time and so it's part of their budget and voters have you know, continue to support them. And, and, you know, I'm sure at some point they must have gone from a constable to a police force and they bit the bullet and, and did it. Um, I think that when you have full-time coverage, 
you know, these people, they're managing stuff, you know, a lot more. They're probably doing house checks when people go to Florida, they're doing, you know, maybe they're doing truancy that, you know, there's probably a lot more services that the Royalton police department are providing than, than certainly than we do. Things that they're providing something that we're allowing to slip through the cracks that we, <laughs> right. That maybe we're not seeing all the bad things that are happening. I think that's true. I think that's very true. I think once you, you know, have more coverage, certainly, people, you know, people are going to be less apt to take chances by just calling BSP or not calling anyone and making more reporting. So, I mean, are you feeling like maybe we should, I think the budget that we put with the sheriff's office originally, when I had talked to the prior, or I guess he's the sheriff now, but won't be soon, 72,902. So, I mean, do you, that for us, that was, we were looking at, you know, about 18 hours a week because we were saying $63 an hour, 65 cents a mile. And um, also that included a dog warden. Um, so do you feel more comfortable that you want to put out um, the $70,000 budget? And just, I mean, obviously it's all going to go to the voters in the end. So to have a bigger discussion at town meeting about what people feel like. I'm confused. Okay. Because it seems to me that, that when this conversation started, we were not only talking about part-time, but we had a, a lower expectation of the responsibilities that this person would have. Which person? The sheriff? The constable. Oh, okay. Uh, and that, that, did, that was not full-time police, or that was not full police coverage. Right. Uh, however, however, we well, so our forty thousand dollars was budgeting for part time and limited services. Right. Part -time. And we were depending upon uh, the state and the county to provide police protection. The state, for sure. The county, no. Well, but, yeah. But we were not. We were not even thinking we were providing police protection. Well, I mean, you were. You you guys allowed Oscar to. But, Oscar is but, full. But Oscar. because he was so authorized, right. does not mean that that's what we were expecting. It's a bonus. Right. All right. Bonus. If. If our $40,000 budget was for both limited time and limited services, we're talking about doubling that, but we're also talking then about unlimited services for that period of time. Uh, in kind of. full police protection. Yeah, I mean, while they're here, but if they're not here, right. I, yeah, but I'm I'm just wanting to compare apples to apples, uh, because we've made two significant jumps in this whole conversation. If we were to think about a full time officer being here, that's mm -hmm. both a full time and full service. Yeah, that's the the going from. Partial service to full service is a jump that we have not intentionally made. It has happened because the role of the constable, the, re the requirements, the training, et cetera, et cetera, has moved the constable into doing more police work. Sure, yeah. Uh, if you take Oscar out of the mix and you just say constable versus you know sheriff, then yes, you're you're right. If you use Oscar versus uh, Windsor County Sheriff, then I think they would be offering you very similar services as to what we pay for now with Oscar because of his certifications and his law. But you're correct if you were just thinking of just a regular constable. Yeah. So I, I want to be clear mm -hmm. in our conversation about this that we're, this is not just about ours. This is also about moving from a constable model 
to a police model. True. And um, but the but the challenge we have is I I know the, the state has moved that model for us over the over the years. So I mean, yeah. it used to be, you know, no, don't want to pick on constables, but it used to be anybody could be a constable. I mean, you, you, all you needed to do was just pay your money and get your certificate, and and then and then if you wanted to have a gun, then you had to have you know take your firearm test. That was it. I mean, it, it was wild west. And then the certifications they have added and added and added to the constables to the point now that there is very little difference between a constable and a 2E or whatever yeah. level that is that that we would say is a fully trained police officer. So there's there's like this much room now. And and they do that because state law statute is that everybody in in the state is granted full-time service from Vermont State Police, right? So that's, we're all under Vermont State Police's umbrella. Now, and then when you have any type of additional service, so say you have your own police department or your own constable, then that is like you're talking, that's an extra layer of policing that you have accepted in your community. So we have VSP, and then we have our constable. So, but the problem they have the now issue, is, yeah, regardless of why, mm -hmm. if we're moving to a model of police protection, one way or another, state induced or or because we've decided made that decision, uh, de facto, uh, the the citizenry needs to know that. Mm -hmm. Because the, the citizens under, don't necessarily understand that one of the reasons we have difficulty is that we have difficulty finding people who are qualified mm -hmm. to serve in that position. And we no longer have the option of a constable the way we used to think of it. Right. I actually, and, and if that is no longer an option, I think we need to say that right up front to the town, and and so then the question becomes: Do we have any? Do we, <laughs> as a town, engage any further police protection other than the state? I think that the select board prior to this select board made the decision that Bethel was going to go towards a more police model. The yeah. minute that they hired Oscar and gave him the authority to use his, which was within their rights, which is within state statute, to act as a as a police officer, as, as a law enforcement person, as a 2E. So I think it was not this board. It was the board prior but, when they hired Oscar and they gave well, him would, the authority to I would say the town that. had agreed to, like we talk about, everybody has the umbrella of Vermont State Police. And I think right. our community has agreed over years to have that extra protection, which was a part-time protection, which which we had talked about, which was 20 hours of extra service a week that that's kind of what we have talked about as a community um and i think right now the reality is that phone call that used to you pick up 911 and somebody from the barracks is at your house in five minutes now might be 25 30 45 minutes right mm -hmm. so you've kind of lost that umbrella piece and the reality is that payroll wise were three hours a week over the constable yeah. right so i mean that that's that's all the protection that our citizens have right now is a vsp that is stretched mm -hmm. and making it very difficult to respond appropriately and a con and we don't have the luxury of a constable that's able to put in that layer of extra protection so i think at this point we need to do we want to just keep it as as is? Let's see what Lindley says so, too. Yep. Go ahead, Lindley. Well, I was going to say I have a question, but Lenny's had his hand up for a while, so I want to give him. Oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't see it, Lenny. I'm sorry. It's, well, I, I it's think that's okay. the... I just have a question, like two want to address two things. Um, you kept saying full time, but 
not defining what what full time is or what this this elect this sheriff elect means by full time. Um, and the other thing is to tag on to what Jean was saying. I was thinking it would be helpful to to clearly define the difference between a constable and a police, so that if we are moving that way, people really understand and really are informed to vote on that. That's all I wanted to throw out there. But if you could okay. really explain full time, that would be great. Like what he sees as full time, this sheriff elect. Okay, we'll come back to that, I think. I mean, quickly, Lenny, what, so like we were talking about the, the um, differences in qualifications between what uh, a constable and a, we'll call it a fully certified police officer um, is very mm -hmm. narrow nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't say they have to have the same accreditations, but they're very close. So they have to be yeah. part time, sir. Right. Um, so they've so, officially so moved what require what a constable is required to do to become a constable. Is yeah, what you're correct. And, and that's oh. you know just like you know okay. extra trainings that they need to right. have um, because of everything you know. Um, and then I think when we talk about full time, it, and that's where it gets, it it's confusing for the citizens is, especially in Bethel, is because we were so we have been so used to having, not only Vermont State Police barracks, two miles mm -hmm. outside of town, but we've always had a member of our society being one of those individuals, right? We've had that maybe extra layer of protection of having you know. Um, a officer that lives in our community that stops over at the school or, you know, does all those little things that maybe, you know, we'd like a constable to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so a combination of Vermont state police is thinned out um, mm -hmm. where their, their um, response time to calls is getting longer um, to our citizens. Uh -huh. um, and it, cause usually this is what usually happens. So, if your constable is on duty and there's a call out, your constable is going to take that call for a majority of instances. So um, unless it gets into like something like a domestic uh, thing where there might have to be multiple officers or something like that. But a majority of the call outs when you have somebody that is in your community that is um, working they take those calls. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of what we're saying is the commitment we've given to the community is 20 hours a week. So that would be 20 hours a week. We have an individual that is in our community um, that is um, be, is being seen, is doing, um, is doing traffic uh, control pieces, um, working with the community, but also while they're on duty during those 20 hours, they take those call outs oh, or most of them. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and so when we talk about the sheriff's department is because their level of accreditation is when they are on patrol. So if you have them, <clears throat> they're on schedule in your town, then they take a hundred percent of the call outs because they are train for all the scenarios mm -hmm. um obviously there's you know certain things where there's multiple officers have to by law you know by right. different things sure. but they take a hundred percent so when we're talking full-time service that means basically the call comes in the sheriff's department handles those calls for you even if it's four <laughs> days a week they're right. taking a hundred percent of your calls for four days so oh, we're not talking about Full time for one hundred twenty five thousand yeah. is not seven days a week, twenty four okay. hours a day. That's yeah. very okay. Not. That's right. so it's not in hours or something like that. It's in yeah, it's no. it's in velocity. It's very difficult. They, okay, yes. it's very difficult. From Ryan was telling us, you know, kind of how the process works and when you're on duty and not on duty and how the how they you know basically when you're on duty you report and dispatch knows you're on duty. So that you now have all the calls. That's like um, if Oscar's in town and he's working, he they takes, know he's on duty. He, and he takes, takes all the calls, the calls. and yeah. people call him at night and weekends and he answers his cell phone and that sort of right. thing. He also does all of our dog issues. So animal okay. control officer, but yes, the state changed it several years ago. So a constable 
has to have it has to be at least part time certified by the state. So constables gotcha. are now police officers. Police Oscar officers. is more than that. More has more certification than that. So, um, so I think that the question that is with our board, anyways, is the options that I see is: Do we want to stay the course of what we have now? Which, which what we have now is we're budgeting for. You know, not counting the signage that we, you know, put in there, it's roughly around forty-two thousand dollars a year that we budget to have budgeted twenty hours of call time, but is really three or four hours. Yeah. Um. So, do we want to keep the way it is? Um. There is the potential for longer call outs to services, uh, being that we don't have somebody immediately, or we could continue the budget maybe take some of that money and do some selective call outs with the sheriff's department like you could have them on one day a week or two days a week right and we could use up some budgetary money right and to have some selective times that they around come in. yeah about seventy three thousand is what we had in this we could go or or we go to the sheriff's department instead of having a constable for the 20 hours of you know that part-time service we have the cons or the sheriff's department do that part-time service for us but that is going to put our budget doubling it to mm -hmm. 75 or so thousand dollars for that service that we want so last year we budgeted fifty seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars and now we're looking to go to 72 which is a seventeen thousand eight hundred dollar roughly bump to get it to the 72 and change. Mm -hmm. So it's not 40,000. Well, yeah, kind of and the signage. We bought that oh, one you're taking the signage out. Okay. The 50, you take that 15 grand out for those speed carts and signage stuff that we bought. Yeah. Oh, okay. The other option you have is to do so, what you've done before, which is say you're going to go to, maybe you're going to go to 75,000 and then do the residents want to have a conversation about policing and maybe they want to go to that. 125,000. I don't know, but sorry. Do you have a breakdown of your budget of what an annual expense or amortized expenses for the cruiser? Because if you go this route, you won't need that part. Right. right. Yep. And we did subtract that. So currently what we budget is we budget $5,000 a year to go into the um, cruiser fund because we just buy a used one every so many years. And then we budgeted three thousand dollars on top of that for maintenance so you're right in the iteration i did for windsor county sheriff i removed all that stuff and basically the big hit was 63 dollars an hour plus 65 cents a mile um and we would have to get a dog warden so <clears throat> i came up with sixty three thousand two thirty two. 232 um but this was after i spoke to the current windsor county sheriff mm -hmm. not the sheriff elect and then so that's how I'd come up with that number. So what you, you also have another option we didn't really think about is you could con, you could keep Oscar and set him to X amount of hours a week plus contract with the sheriff's office. But that would be a really big budget yeah. because then you'd have to add the cruiser back in and all that sort of stuff. Well, I haven't heard anybody talking about the fact that when we first started talking about increasing, uh, maybe going to full-time policing or whatever it was, was Oscar was saying, you know, he's 20 hours a week. If he had any incidents at all, he spent more than half of that time behind the desk. You're right. Don't so if we're only going to get 20, 20 hours and they have two incidents, we're going to have them on, on, the, on the streets about four hours. You're right. Right. Okay. So to go less than full time, think about it. It's, you're the right. potential is you're not going to have even what you got now. It's true. Because... <laughs> If you ever saw it, I mean, I've seen them submit cases and, and they're like this thick no, and you know, and, and you're, but you're true. right. I'm just saying we haven't talked about that piece. You're right. And that's a big, that's a big deal. If, if it, we're paying $63 an hour for a bookkeeper. The, the other thing I want to make aware, and I've heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. and I have heard this from one of the constables is that I don't want to say that they don't want to pick up hours with us, but for them to come to Bethel to pick up hours because we pay less than their other potentials. So for right. instance, making it up, if Oscar did, let's say had 
eight hour day or something, or he could come in four hours here and four hours there. We pay like 18, 25 an hour. Right. And he could easily go get 28 to 30 bucks an hour to not come to Bethel. So yeah. one thing I was doing That's after true. the fact was what if, you know, what I took is, you know, if you did 20 hours of, of time in the community, um, what if we increased our pay to something more 28 Attractive. bucks an hour, <laughs> Yep. keep the same type of service and see if maybe for this next budget cycle, we could maybe attract our current constables to want to pick up some of those hours because right now for them to want to pick those hours up, they're losing money. You know, I mean, it, um, so then I don't want to say that they don't want to come to Bethel, no, but it's like, it's hard. I want to come, but for eighteen dollars an hour, when I can yeah. get twenty eight bucks, why would I want to do that? And some of them too were on. Were on at and, least I think Justin was on mandatory overtime for a while because the constables. And that's the other thing is we. That may be a better option because we also don't know. And no offense to any of the sheriffs, how many of these people will leave because they don't want to be under the new sheriff? Whereas, so if we do bump, that's an idea. If we bump to 28 bucks an hour, 30 bucks or whatever you want, you're right. Maybe there's somebody who currently works for the Orange County Sheriff or Windsor County Sheriff that may not want to work for the sheriff elect. And you may. There's an there. The Orange County is expecting to lose a couple. Yeah. You know, they know. So, so maybe if we. Right. Trying to sweeten the pot, maybe there'd be somebody who would be willing to. So, so I guess the so I don't know. I guess what the number I came up with was: why don't we keep it, keep it the same right now? Let's budget the twenty hours. We don't know what's going on with the sheriff's department, and probably won't. And it, probably one year would probably be nice to see what does happen. Mm -hmm. Plus, I think it puts us in better negotiation to you know if if they like right now you don't want to be the first person to have the sheriff in the area because you're going to get taken advantage of where if they do hire somebody in this area and then they can't find enough hours for that person you might be in better negotiation power to say at the end of the day yeah what can Beth will get for 50,000 right where right now we're paying the full boat for it right so I was looking at why don't we just keep the 20 hours but budget $28 an hour for our constable so that number, instead of 57, went to roughly 67. So it was about $10,000 more mm -hmm. um, for the budget. So it's less than the sheriff's, but it's more than what we currently have. And then what I would say is I would sit down mm -hmm. with our two constables and say, listen, this is what we're willing to do, or this is what we need. Yep. We need 20 hours of your service a week between the two of you. Mm -hmm. And we are willing to pay a wage that is competitive at $28 an hour and I need commitments from you. And if I don't get those commitments from you, then I'm going to put it Advertise. out for bid mm -hmm. and we could put it out for advertisement. And I think at $28 an hour, we'd have an, you know, not maybe there would be somebody that's came from orange County. That's looking, you know, that has the credentials that could spend 10 hours a week or something. And I'm just thinking that because the, the complaints I've heard is that, you know, Bethel doesn't pay enough money so it's you know <laughs> not really that they don't want to come here it's just and it makes sense right and then it gives us some time to kind of kick the can on the sheriffs and we can have some more discussions in regards to how police services look like um but that's kind of what I was thinking is what do you think Lindley Yeah, I mean, so I'm just digesting Chris's new add-on. Um, originally, I was kind of where both Paul and Jean were kind of hitting on of like, these are big jumps in general. Um, and also, you know, just going up to 72,000 was, was a jump. And then going to 125 felt almost not sustainable given the conversations we've been having within this budget and being realistic forward thinking, knowing that we don't have the 50,000 that we currently have in the budget from the transfer station sale, that that's not real moving right. forward, that offsets it. And so that like that jump to 125 felt unreasonable in my mind. Um, 
but I'm intrigued by Chris's idea of actually making it a competitive rate and seeing what happens and kind of almost maybe even holding um, holding Oscar and Justin's feet to the fire a bit. You know, I think some of our frustration is that they're not available to us in the way that we all felt they would be. And it's I the, think that they felt they would be in the beginning and then with the change, you're right. And then see what they can do. And, and, um, and, and Chris may be right about sweetening the pot. I don't know. I think it also bumping up to 63 Sorry. gives us some flexibility then to make a little bit more of a different decision moving forward. If we can't find somebody, then we, we still can entertain the contract with the sheriffs. It's not going to be a, ton of hours it's not going to be maybe as much as we wanted but it's still something you know and then we look at it for future years I mean, right. it does yeah, yeah it gives you the chance to see what orange county sheriff's going to do and what windsor county sheriff's going to do right right Lindley. Right. yeah there is a part of me that also says maybe this does go to the voters um for more of a final you know a final appropriation amount. I just think what's difficult in that is what are we taking to the voters? I don't well, I don't they, think any of us have clarity on what that would be at this point in time. Yeah, exactly. And the the other point is too is once the budget comes up for discussion, the entire budget's up for discussion. So if we'll just use stick with Janice just because she was one who called me, if Janice wanted to go to 125,000 she can certainly come to the select board next week and talk. And she could also stand up in front, you know, at town meeting and say, Hey, I want more police service and this is what I want. And then it would be a discussion there for the voters. But I mean, I'm, I'm happy to do a, the next iteration of the budget and remove the sheriff's office line and up the wages. And then if that's what, or if you guys are in agreement with that. Hours and the monies that are available now, you could even do that sooner rather than later you wouldn't have to wait till the yeah next, you're right <laughs> you wouldn't have to wait till the next budget right. you're right comes around you could do it almost that uh, almost now you're right because we've saved so much because money because so lack much of money hours. that's there that's true that's a really good point what does that what do you think dave you got a funny look on your face <laughs> just a funny look well they, they, you know the numbers are not quite, totally correct you got to crunch the Medicare and right. Social Security. Yeah. Sure. I'll do I mean, that. We're just talking twenty thousand dollars. There's a significant amount of number that goes with that. Yeah, I'll run the number and and see. And um, but I agree. I agree that it's on. It, it's the way it is. You're not. You're not. You can't. My daughter works at McDonald's. You can't get anybody to work for eighteen dollars an hour and flip burgers. Mm -hmm. So they're going to put on a uh, uniform and get shot at for eighteen dollars an hour? I don't think so. <clears throat> That's a good. Eventually, point. so is that okay. is that what the board wants to do for now? Is to just another something to think of, to throw into the mix is that to have twenty four seven coverage requires four full time people. Sure. Okay, so uh, that's so when we're talking about one hundred twenty-five thousand a piece. What what we're yeah. what we're talking about is one hundred and sixty-eight hours in a week. For eight hours is five percent of that meaning 95% of our coverage is coming from someplace else. Right. And so part of the question is, if we would go to 24 hours, three shifts, three shifts of eight, we're talking about 15%. We're talk, still talking about 85% of our protection coming from somewhere else. I think we need to we need to ask ourselves and the community needs to ask itself um, whether that's acceptable. Meaning we should pay nothing or we should pay more? One way or the other. If we're only getting 15% cover, I mean, police services are needed 24 seven. Right. Seven days a week. Uh, the uh I I just seems to me that if we're um but you get 24 hour police service currently. 
We do. We get twenty seven three sixty five. Pay for it, but you do. But, but your response time might be. But the response time is two yeah, hours away. So my, you know? I just think that as a community, we would be well advised to think about what that really means. Mm -hmm. That means eighty five percent of the time, we're being covered. By somebody else or with yeah. or not okay. covered exactly. by with that forty hour or that four hour I'm a German Shepherd at home. I'm covered twenty four seven. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's but that's my. I I just think that's a piece of the puzzle. Yeah. That is worth thinking about, as we're trying to figure out how much money it costs to provide. The police protection that the community needs right. it, it's it's a bigger it's question. a it's a big question i don't have an answer i just want to raise the issue mm -hmm. of what it is we're really talking about i think a question for kirk white is going to be what there has been rumor for years that there may eventually be legislation that forces small towns to take on some of their own policing. And especially with VSP stretched and apparently covering a lot of Burlington because of the issues that Burlington is having. So it is interesting. It would be an interesting question for Kirk to, to see if, is that something he's heard of? Does he think that's on his radio radar or what? What that the legislator might do that? No, about Brunt. Oh, I, yes, I'm sorry. So it looks like Lindley is handling questions online. So nice job, Lindley. <laughs> Local constable was just having the presence and the eyes and ears out there, and what value there is between relationships with them and how they hear about things going on. I'm just thinking about back in the day, Wendell, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, he was, he'd be out here parking, someone would pull up and say, hey, you know, and for whatever, right. either good or bad, but that's kind of a, un, you can't measure that really, other than it's just valuable to be there. No, that, that is, that is, that is, that is. Somebody. Well, I think in, uh, yeah, I think Tina was touching on what I kind of said at the beginning, which is, you know, I think as a community, and it's, I don't think it's going to be solved today, tonight, or in this budget cycle is, you know, do we want to be proactive or potentially reactive, right? And because, you know, when you start talking about it, think of how much time that we are on our own, right? If something happens. Yes. And as a community, I think we have to say is how much proactive do we want to be in regards to something that could happen or how much, you know, responsibility do we want to take for ourselves on that? And, um, but again, it's, it's tough because like even the sheriffs, like, you know, we could contract right now, but that doesn't mean that we're going to have somebody here because they don't even have the infrastructure put together. Mm -hmm. So it might be like we're saying, it's better to let them play out. Maybe we get a better negotiation seat at the table. I don't think we want to go like, I can't remember what the town was. I was seeing, reading about on Digger that Dave said, you ain't going to show up. We'll take care of business. And it's in the news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Vigilantes. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Vigilantes. Yeah. Owen has his hand up, Chris. Yep. Hey, y'all. Um, <clears throat> I really liked what um, Rick Benson just said. And it kind of brings me back to this question of, what are we actually asking for as far as services? And I think there is this piece that is the community contact piece. I've heard you say it, Chris, like waiting outside the school and kind of being that relationship building, you know, being the ear of the town, what's going on, what's happening. And also being a trusting steward of the town. And um, I personally don't think that has to be a police officer. I think there we could envision, we could dream a little bigger about what does it look like to have someone who is essentially doing like community policing, community accountability that doesn't wear the badge, that doesn't have the same law enforcement role, but could be in contact with um, 
VSP as needed. And, and really that's a model that's more like prevention. If you have somebody that's listening that can go knock on the door and be like, hey, just checking what's going on in here. Um, you know, that's, you could avoid a lot of worse, worse things happening um, if you have that type of trusted person. Um, that's just one idea. Um, and also I think, um, I think it just keeps coming back to me, the question of, you know, are, is this 20 hours a week, even if it's actually happening and happening well, the way the town wants to, is it actually addressing the need of the town? Because it sounds like, you know, the issues that we've heard about with substance use and speeding and, you know, these things, 20 hours a week just seems like, I, it just doesn't seem like that much time, um, especially if it's not at the right times. And so I just wonder about, um, yeah, there, there hadn't been an idea a while back of, you know, moving away from the idea of having our own uh, constable. Um, and I guess just for me, I support that idea and I support thinking outside the box about what does the town actually need? How do we prevent the issues that are happening instead of just looking for people to respond to them after they've happened? That's my I thought. think that one of the things, Owen, that um, Sheriff-elect Palmer had said was his goals for, you know, very big on community policing. And his goal was he would like to have a social worker on his staff. Um so that you know he had another layer of of you know that someone to help officers or to help people that you know are need and he was really his goal is is very i think of the word i want but i mean it, it's a great goal it's what we would all want him to have to be successful with his model which is having very highly trained community oriented people as well as having social workers and He's talking about, you know, even if homeless people, if someone's homeless, ha having officers and people find them a place to go and know all the services and and things. But um, so certainly he definitely has some laudable goals, which and, I think and, and we hopefully he can do it. And um, but so so definitely, oh, and he is thinking of those things, too. So I just wanted you to know, um, even if we don't do it this year, but if we end up moving with him, that is one of his goals, too, is um having maybe even a school resource officer and because he has that certification as well so he definitely has some really big community oriented goals he's the chair of the select board in windsor so he certainly understands towns and town needs and and things so i just wanted you to know a bit of what he said and i think when we were talking about full-time service we had left that out but yeah you know full-time service i mean for the most part means that you have the same individual in town, um, but you're covered at all times for all call outs uh, in a quicker response time than you would currently get. But there were some other caveats like, um, you know, a, a, a social um, worker um, that can deal with certain cases and things like that. So those were definitely yeah. some of the pieces and those that come with that. His goals, extra. but he's not there yet. But I also got from him that, <laughs> you know, even if we said we want to do full-time service with him, that 125 this year could turn into like 150 or more the next, next year. year. You know, yeah. I think once you get bought in, it starts ratcheting up type deal. And, and it, you know, so that's why I think, you know. Maybe he just needs time to get his yeah ducks in a row as is orange and then maybe you'll have more options but so anyways i am happy to do their new iteration of the budget um and i think that paul makes an excellent point which is there's already enough savings in the budget and i can crunch those numbers paul to see if that's something that we could move to sooner with oscar and justin and then if someone's unable or unwilling maybe we look for somebody new so i think paul's right 15 8 that was in there uh for this this budget year now. Yep. That is for that is the movable sign. It's for two more speed signs like we had last year, the solar ones, and for a speed cart that you could move and put like on Church Street or move here, move there. There was like there three items. Yes. Okay. And what's the status on those? You're just not ordered yet. I was waiting. I was honestly hoping because the eighty eight hundred dollar speed cart went up 
significantly. Mm -hmm. So when I first looked at the beginning of the year, so I was kind of hoping as things people's backlogs of from COVID got better that maybe the price would come down a little bit because mm -hmm. 8,800 I budgeted was now 10 something. Mm -hmm. So anyways, I'll have to get them ordered because I know I have to have them by yeah, the end of that, June and I'm not going to install to my. So that has to be spent on in this. Yeah, month I'll spend year. it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. But you know what? I, yeah. I you know, I was hoping. Oh, just so, you know, I, I, a couple of folks asked me about. Yeah. Eight or 15, eight. That's what it is. <laughs> yes. That is it. Sorry. So as far as the budget, um, really not any more tweaks than, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. And. Also, to next week, when you meet with the recreation committee, we'll know what they're looking for as well as, um, and like I said, I just got the insurance, but I think overall, the budget is pretty darn close at the six, I think we're at what, 6.87% amount to be raised by taxes, which actually, because of the growth in the grand list, puts you at less than 3%. So I don't know if anybody else, uh, let's see. So that put us at a, well, I mean, it put us before in, the add-ons we we're right. basically at level funded. Yeah. But if you, if the add-ons did get voted in, which was the sheriff extra in the library, yeah, then it would go up about two cents. Yeah, so yeah, the current budget, it's actually down right now over last year just because of the growth in the grant list. So it's so a couple of things that <laughs> you really want to get confused. Yeah. So my numbers that I was looking at overall. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at like I was talking about adding twelve thousand dollars to the constable budget. Yep. Not the not the sheriff's portion, right, of it, just, but to yeah, the existing you. one. Yep. That would give us that twenty eight dollars an hour. Yep. So I was looking at adding twelve thousand to the budget for that. Yep. But then I was looking at, and I could be wrong, but I think you can take twenty thousand dollars out of White River Valley Ambulance. Yeah, I got to look at the work. I think you can take twenty thousand out of that budget. And I was going to move that twenty thousand to the um, highway department for our matches towards our grants that we have. So move it to a capital fund. Right. And then I looked at adding another 25,000 to our capital roads on top of that, okay. which that would, um, when I looked at that, that was a net, net add of 37,000 um, to that 106 tax rate, which that would be about a penny and a half. So that would be 107. That would have put us at 107 something, yep. um, which would be up a penny from last year. Yep. Recognizing the adjustments to the grand list. Mm -hmm. So we would be at a what I call a base budget of 107, and then we would still have the addition, potential addition of the library for 27.5, which if people voted that in, that would be another penny, just over a penny. So that you know would be at like 108 something. So that would be yeah, you'd be you'd be just under three pennies if everybody added all that in. And the reason why I kind of got to those numbers is that. You know, that has been the number that we have targeted for years on that three cent increase to get us to that realistic budget number. And the only reason why I say I think we got to that realistic budget number about a year ago. And the reason why we didn't see an addition last year is because our grand list grew faster than than the added costs that we had added because we thought we were going to be raising it almost three cents right it ended up coming in level funded because of the grand list changes right sure. um, we got that fifty four thousand dollars we got here from the thing and that that's but that's, that's only that's two and a half yeah but it's, it's in this budget yep it is in mm -hmm. this budget yeah. so if you go up three you're actually if that fifty four wasn't in there you're going to go up uh, five and a half. Right. Uh, As yeah, because uh, yeah. yeah. if you look at it in here right now, if we did nothing, let's say we didn't have that 
money in there, just the additions for what I would say is inflation type numbers that we're seeing with the salt and material and diesel and heating, heating oil, oil and and all that, we would have to ask for a minimum of like two and a half cents this year just for that. You know what I mean? So and, what and let's hope that this inflationary piece of it is very last less than our five years of extra money for the transfer station, right? I guess is yeah, that's kind the, of the thing way I'm looking at it. People may not understand is the money that Chris is talking about is the fact that we sold our interest to the transfer station. So we get fifty four thousand a year for five years. So that money will go away. So the select board's trying to keep a handle on that. So and you want to be careful because if you raise your budget, right, fifty four thousand dollars, then at five years from now, you're gonna have to come up with two and a half yeah. cents more in one year. So if you move it to a oh. capital fund, you're actually better than increasing it to like wages or salt or whatever and, because and the reason why i say that is we have we have four grants that we have received that we have to do in the next two years mm -hmm. so we have mm -hmm. the we have well we have the sidewalk the pleasant street sidewalk mm -hmm. grant we have the sand hill um the sand hill and water yeah that's going into your bond but yeah well not yeah. well the not the, the 150 000 match but then paving and you know the right. whole yeah no, we have the christian good. hill grant that we have and then we have the um the watershed bridge oh p vine bridge yeah yeah that's p vine bridge. bridge sorry yeah so we have those things that all that we have grant money that's been grant granted to the town that we have to take care of in the next two years so right i just see it as an opportunity to try to match those funds and that's certainly where why we moved so much of the arpa money into that was to cover certainly you're looking at 1.6 million in grants and a lot of that has matching funds with it but the other thing too is don't forget about the skate park that is an unknown right now i gave you the information in the packet about the skate park um you know i i have built the budget around $10,000 just to go into the capital fund. We don't know what the, I did ask Ellie the other day and she's coming, they're coming Monday, next Monday at seven mm -hmm. because the power was located in a position that would not allow them to do the 20 by 70 edition. And because Dietrich's out, I, I want to see a site plan from them because the land water conservation grant requires them to do extend this sidewalk to make it accessible. And if that's going to go over that power, that may require, well, it can't, but if it does, it's going to require us to dig it in for concrete, but I don't think they'll let you do that either. I'm not sure if they will either. So that's what I need to see. The site map is to see where they're connecting from to get hmm. to the addition. And if we can't do that, then they can't honor the terms of their land water conservation grant. And there goes 50 grand. So she, I did ask her, obviously we can't develop further to the right. I'm going to say right. instead of Northwest East, whatever, but to, cause that's Ketchum's property and they've already built a nice end. So I'm not sure, you know, lengthwise you can't expand further cause you're going to go into the parking lot one way. So I don't really know. It'll be interesting. There's certainly a lot of creative options that the right committee will come up with and, but they'll talk to you about that. So this doesn't include any additional money yet for that, but we know that's a possibility that if you don't take the amount that they request from the capital, you know, the rec you know, infrastructure, then it'll have to go in front of the voters. So just keep that in mind too. There's just a piece that we don't know yet. So, um, Anyways, is definitely on board for the. Yep, they are. They're very excited that, um, and they're going to be Lisa's getting together their, you know, what they're going to do. So there's 70, what, what is it, 7,500 in the budget, plus they're asking for an additional 27,500 because, you know, the financial situation that the library is in. So it'll be interesting to see. I think it'll be a great discussion. Well, I think we also somehow have, you know, even though we may vote. To increase twenty seven thousand five hundred on that item, the conversation needs to be more futuristic on that as well. Because yeah, once it's in, it's going to be in. It's, and it's, it's almost grow. like if we if we do put that in twenty seven five, then that's something. If we want to have the library at a minimal value, that that is the right appropriation yearly that we would have to give them. But remember, that was minimum, right? That wasn't even. Right. You know, they right. really said right. to be a functional library, they needed a hundred thousand from the and their budgets. What did they, what's their budget? 
80, 70. Who? Sorry. What's, their, what's the library's budget right now? Uh, that they that was, they run off short, of? It was far short. Of what 60, it yeah, because 60 it was something. something low because they were taking 30. And they said that they somebody taking... told them the library that size should be running off $150,000. Yeah. Budget. And what they've been doing is what Maybe they've been doing 60. is they've just been drawing money. And I mean, they're they're literally if they're only a couple of years away from just being done because they've been, you know, they, their endowment or whatever, they've just been drawing that down to nothing. Exactly. So it's either, do we want to have a library? And if so, this is how much it's going to cost us. Right. So putting that out there this year is not just a- No, it's going to be a- uh, One year fix. This is would have to be- Every what year. people would expect for an appropriation going forward as well, sizable like that. So that we have to make sure that people understand yeah. that. But so, do you want to move on to the warning? Do we have anything else? Want budget? to answer? There's been this whole other conversation on Zoom about speed bumps and this and that and the other. So, um, my advice would be that the Dubois and King will be coming to the select board in February. Um, I believe January, or February, the date hasn't been set yet to um, go over their better connections kind of big reveal. We just had a big event Friday. Um, you can certainly go on the website um, and see all the information that's out there now. Du Bois and King is putting together a, it's just a plan. Um, it doesn't, there's no money behind it at this point. It doesn't say any of it's going to happen tomorrow, but certainly making recommendations about uh, maybe parking on one side of the street. Um, where's the best location to have crosswalks? Uh, proper signage. Where should we increase parking? How can we have handicap parking down street? Uh, can buildings be made handicap accessible? So there's a lot of information out there. And if you just Google Bethel for all, I think it'll take, you know, you'll see their website and um, and they've been gathering a lot of information. So. And which which meeting are they coming to on that one? I don't know yet. Some oh. point I talked to Chris um, Sargent Friday night because we had. I think it's going to be in February, but we haven't set the date yet because there's they have to get the final iteration of their plan together. That's why they were doing a big thing Friday to get more ideas and more feedback on the plan so that they can okay. kind of finalize the ideas. So, um, so we'll right. see. Okay. So unless we have any anything else on the budget discussion for this evening, we will move to the drafting of the town meeting warning. All right. Should we have a copy in our... Yep. So there's a couple things. So obviously, um, I don't know. I did put number 12, um, the recreation facility for the skate park, just in case, you know, as a placeholder, um, I will get... As you know, Paul will always, you know, provides us with the social service numbers. Um, I'll correct the White River Valley ambulance numbers. Then item 16, I don't know, you guys never really settled on if you were going to do just 16 or 16 and 17. Um, 16 is shall the town of Bethel elect its town officers by Australian ballot and then the second is, shall the town of Bethel adopt all budget articles by Australian ballot? I kind of felt like the last discussion we had about this, you were leaning towards doing officers only and leaving the budget to be discussed at town meeting. But right. that was a discussion. Yeah, yeah, I'm not really sure where that, I don't know, as you ended up on a decision. So I threw them both in here. Um, so going through the warning here. Um, so uh, just kind of going from top to bottom here. Sure. Um, you know, moderator, clerk, treasurer, those are all normal board members. So this is the three-year and two-year seat. And then Lister. So Pam Brown's seat is Lister. You have that only in for a one-year Because term? you appointed her for the balance of a term. So she has to serve the balance of Louise's term, which will be a year. So I'm just trying to get there, but is it Louise's? Is it normally a three-year term it that normally, ends next year? It normally is a three-year term, but Louise had a couple of years left, so Pam finished this portion of her term, and then she would just run for the balance of the term. And the balance of the term is one year. That's why it says Pam Brown. 
Is that, that's why I, know, I just couldn't wrap my head around that. Is that because isn't even though you may be filling one year left of a three year, don't you still advertise it as a serving no. one year of the three year term or something? I don't know. Well, that's, that's I mean, either. so she's serving because it says, oh, so I, I guess for a one year right to succeed because, like, wouldn't that still be like a three-year well i guess what we could do is say this three year like as a, of 20 you know what we, 2024 or something like that is if that you look right, at or? the wording on number nine for paul i could say for the balance of a term of one year how does that because don't rick don't we normally because wouldn't you say that the balance of a three-year term ending in 20 yeah. So if it's only one more year, 2024. Yeah. So look at number nine. If we word Pam's to look like Paul's on number nine, use the same wording, it'll take care of it. Yeah. Okay. So I'll it would be, but it would say. Uh... For the balance, the balance of a, term... a three-year. For the balance of a term of one year. So his term expires and I, I can look I at the know, I was just trying that it didn't look right to me. All right. Well, you know what? I can look at some other blank. I can look at them again and like it, I get what you're saying. You want them to know it's a one year of a three year. Right. Okay. Let me look at some language. I mean, does it yeah. Okay. Could someone in know. theory run against her? Yes, absolutely. I'm not even sure she's running. <laughs> so I don't know. She's just the appointment. Yeah, absolutely. Now. Somebody could run against Pam. Chris, Judy, anybody. Um, this that's just who Bethel has always worded it this way. I think Rick could say that, could answer that question. Um, who's who that or who's you normally list who served it current who's in it currently. Yeah. So that's why it says Pam. And I don't even know if Pam's running again. I mean, I understand if you have the full thing, like you know, my seat's a two-year term. Yeah. That you don't necessarily need to say it's gonna be over in 2025, but but if you're in a seat that is a partial, yeah, you know, wouldn't you want to put the? You should still identify that that's a three year seat, right? Yeah, I'll look at it. And when it expires, yeah, yeah it's a three year seat would expire in twenty. Yeah, I just didn't know if the listers had like. No, no, they don't have any. Like, are they all three year or do like do they have like one? They're two all year three and, years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So no, that's fine, Chris. I can. So that's fine. Pam though would have to be a town resident. Lister. Yeah, everybody right. here has uh, to be a town resident. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You can't run to be um a local official. No, I mean just with with the Lister. Uh, yeah. Yep. Just like a select board member or Not town. Necessary. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> um. So yeah. So I just made a little note to look at six and nine to kind of come up with the wording. So let me make it. Morning. Look at the six and number nine. So, so it looks like that day we will have the Australian ballot for cannabis retailers. Yes. So um so do you want to finish? So I can move on to that, but do you guys want to answer the question about 1617 first? What's the pleasure there? Do you want well, hold on. I'm on. I haven't even made that. Apparently. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm on 11, but I don't know where everyone else is. But... <laughs> so, so with the, the library, it says appropriate the sum up. Yep. Up to the sum of 27.5, but isn't that an additional 27.5 from what's budgeted? Like, because mm -hmm. aren't they going to get the nine, the 7,500, 7,500 plus seven, 27.5, which they would discuss. For a total the, of 35? Which they would discuss in number 10. Because they could only discuss the 7,500 in number 10. Right. So but if I'm that just... budget is approved, that 7,500 <laughs> is its own. Because you said you got... But then here you say a sum up, up to a sum of 27,500. Additional. The word additional. I know okay. how confusing this gets at town meeting day. And I remember, remember that one year where everybody thought they were cutting the they were adding 54, but we ended up cutting 54. And that was my first year getting on the board and we had to cut $54,000. Okay. I can make additional. Because we thought that that was our add-ons. And I'm like, I'm sitting in the stand like, I, I'm pretty sure that that's not how that works, but. <laughs> yeah. 
because you all had said you wanted to leave the 7500 in the budget and then let them take the chance so i can say additional. No, additional or or do you put shall the voters appropriate up to the sum of $35,000 for the library knowing that 7500 is what they've already appropriated and 35 is the number that we would be more confusing no, no, yeah. no don't go well, just, the only thing i'm thinking is people need to understand that 35 is the number that the library is going to be looking for every year yeah so additional just take additional okay yeah because plus two you guys already promised them last week that you would leave 7500 in the budget and then let them take their chances for the 275 yep. so i'll just add additional oh it'll get confusing anyway so i know that's where rick comes in he sorts it all out makes it logical <laughs> when people like where'd rick go <laughs> yeah, that's, no. i called him the other day about <laughs> australian ballot so yep yes <clears throat> So is I mean, of course, if that comes of course, up, twelve yeah. right now is a question mark if it's even going to happen. But I'll put right? the word additional in there, and that would be something we'll have to talk about as a board once we find out all the information. Right. Yep. Because Ellie go that way or not. Yeah, yeah, Ellie has her appointment for next next Monday for Monday night at seven. Next Monday, social since we meet services. back to back. And social services, Paul, they always they'll sort out their number yeah. and let us know. All right. It's not going to be, it's right around what it was last year. Okay. And Warva, I will look at, and yes, before you ask, I checked all the dates and all those 15ths are in the middle of the week. They're not on a Saturday or Sunday. <laughs> so I, I flipped through my calendar because I'm like, and it, Chris is going to ask about this. <laughs> yeah. and, and as far as I remember the conversation we had from last year was, was, we had we had agreed as a board that that we would put the Australian ballot by officials, but continue to keep the budget and any informational pieces during town yeah. meeting day. Okay. That that's was my recollection. Right. Um, I know we talked about all the various different pieces, but I think right. that was the only one that we could is, we yeah. did agree right. on. Right. Is is if we put in 16, is it amendable? No, it's not. It's either yay or nay. It's okay, yes or I, I just wanted, so that if somebody wanted to include the other, they the would not have the that option. Little. They would not have that option. Right? Is right. that true, Rick? Right? Well, well, what was your question? Could 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 one could they add say we want the listers to be no, included? No, in no, ballot. sixteen and seventeen Australian ballot. Right. Well, you're saying could sixteen be amendable to add additional? Right. Officers? Could sixteen be amendable to include all articles? Oh, all articles or just. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So let's say let's say seventeen is not there. No. Okay. No, because because that would be my question. Yeah. That's it. Right. But exactly. the reason is because it would be expanding the scope of that article beyond right. what was warned. Right. Yeah. Okay. You can change monetary values. Yeah, and you can change little things. But yeah. But that would be a major change that wouldn't. Right. Okay. Yeah. So Owen is asking this year's town meeting. This year's. The two prior town meetings, because of COVID, were all done Australian ballot. This year will be in person. Um, so, um, and, and to yeah. change any functions of town meeting, you have to go revert back to your original yep. approved setting. So, so if you want, so you to so like vote. like we talked about last year, because we went to Australian vote based upon the COVID restrictions, you couldn't vote. Or Australian ballot because the only way you could right. do that is you have to revert back to your natural settings that you have. So we'd have to wait to the next time we could do an in-person to vote in person on changing that. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. Oh, and because we vote from the floor, we have to vote this article from the floor. So if you want to vote your officers by Australian ballot, it has to get approved at town meeting in your currently um approved voting process does that make sense owen 
Yeah, I don't have the um, draft in front of me that you're reading from. So the proposal okay. is that you would vote officers by Australian ballot and budgetary decisions would be made on the floor. Yes. Is that right? Okay. Yep. Not this year. It would, it would be, it has to be a right. Right. Bit, but Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. And the reason for that is that when the nice thing about voting from the floor, Australian or your budget from the floor is you can have a discussion about mm -hmm. it and, and get more feedback and understanding. Whereas when it goes Australian ballot, there's no feedback. There's no, that right. doesn't pass. You don't know why. And if people want to say in Bethel has done that, add more money for social service agencies. You know, if you vote Australian ballot, you can't do that. So um, that's one of the, one of the so things. So the question I had in regards to the cannabis piece all right, so hang on, let me see, I'm trying to... So oh, being sorry. that the state of Vermont put in their guidelines that that ha has to be voted for through Australian ballot. Yep. So being that that has to go through Australian ballot, does that now open it up as its own item? Do we have to have like our own informational meeting <laughs> for that item? No. Nope. It specifically states um, in here that... Or how do how do we formally talk about the item? Because now it, it's going... Technically, you could talk about it town meeting day, but people could already have voted on that for town meeting day. So how, how do you formally have the discussion as a community you, about the item before voting on the item? I, before, I think unless you want to schedule the date after the yeah, meeting I, or I think that what you're going to do, because it says right here in the in the state legislature, the vote must be by Australian ballot, but no informational hearing is required. My suggestion is we hold two budget informational hearings. So we basically go through the warning. We have to do it 10 days prior to town meeting. Plus, we do it another time. I think that we just have you know, it's, we just discuss it. If somebody wants to discuss it, they can. Um, and then, so this is a little different. So because of this, you're, and I, this, I called Rick and we've talked about them. We talked about it again this evening, 16 after 16, it's going to say this discussion of items to be voted on Australian ballot. The following articles will be voted by Australian ballots. So I think I'm going to renumber this as article one, Shall the town of Bethel authorize cannabis retailers in town pursuant to 7 BSA 863? Then after that, we will go back to eight number 18, which is the non-binding other business, how you end the meeting. And it does say on the warning, polls will be open Tuesday, March 7th, 2023, from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the White River Unified Middle School Bethel campus. So you're right. People may have already voted. Um so 18 is left off ours. Yes, because I had to tie, I had Rick, I sent you guys the draft and I sent it to Rick and Rick realized what I was missing because we had to remove it from the past two warnings because of your Australian ballot because so of COVID. Australian ballot does not necessarily mean that there would be mail in voting or advanced voting. There, yeah, there would be. I think. Well, I, I mean, yeah. I'm, because, they would still have the yeah. absentee, and so options. you would. So for that particular item, it seems to me we would want to have an informational meeting before the polls open or before voting begins. As I yeah, as I just said, we will handle it, it in does. the two informational yeah. meetings prior. But I'm, one we'll of those just... meetings needs to be what? I don't know how long? When do the quote, when can, when does voting begin? That's the question. Voting begins. Let's see. They have to have the ballots. It's either 30 or 20 days prior to, uh, maybe that's town report. I can't remember, but anyways, just, so you're going to be voting Australian ballot also on your school officers. So there'll be a ballot right. for school officials. There'll be a ballot for cannabis and, mm -hmm. and hopefully we're going to have a bond vote on the water project. So I'm just saying yeah. that that information or meeting before, needs to be before people start voting. That's yeah. Right. Well, yeah, and I think what we were talking we about is we need to we normally have two informational meetings just for the budget. Yeah, and you just do it then. So I think what we're going to do is we will encompass that into the budget yeah. meetings, I, but we'll probably have to maybe um advertise we'll it a little that, uh, differently. Yeah. Consider those days. Yeah. 
Yeah. And um, because it's tricky because it, it, like we talked about with the cannabis piece before is, you know, the tricky part of it that people have to understand too is how they have this set up is once you vote it in as a community, right? So, so like we had talked about before, Paul, remember, like if you, if we vote this in as a community and then somebody decides to put a retail spot up, right? So we voted in and let's say in April, somebody wants to put a retail shop up in the downtown or wherever, anywhere in Belfort, yeah. right? And then let's say the voters turn around and say, we don't want this and we vote to have it expunged that retailer is now grandfather clause. Yes. So absolutely. once they're in, even if you change your voting after the fact, they are grandfathered for life. Right. Which is a kind of a weird scenario because, I mean, it's kind of like like alcohol, right? I mean, you could, you know, we, a dry we, we have decided not to be a dry town, right? So you can sell alcohol. Now, if we all of a sudden decide we want to be a dry town, then there would be no alcohol, right? Yeah. But in this case, with the way the legislation did this with the marijuana, is if we turn around and decide at another time as a town and there's someone doing business, they have more rights to continue the business than we do as a town. My right. guess so, is because they put money into it to start the business and wh who knows. My, my guess is the carts in front of the horse, like yeah. normally, and you know. But- so uh, don't forget, though, you can have discussion of this item, because that's one thing that Rick clarified for me was discussion of items to be voted on Australian ballot. So you can have a discussion at town meeting about the item. town of Bella Bethel authorized cannabis retailers. So and you probably have some people in there that, you know, obviously that haven't voted that attend town meeting and will mm. participate in the discussion. But, yes, you will have had some who may have voted prior but we don't get a lot of early voting for town meeting when it's on the floor generally uh, and right there too as far as 16 you can't discuss the officers there can be no discussion on the officers at town meeting right you can't say right yeah we yeah like or don't like yeah if you go if you go off down yeah yeah you're all in yeah so and, I and this time we we can. We can. Yeah. I, I want to be yeah. 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 If the town votes to go Australian ballot. That vote comes after the, we've already elected this year's right. I okay. And that's what we talked about before, the pros and cons of the whole thing. And you know, the uniqueness of having everything on the floor is that mm -hmm. within reason, as long as it's not a major chain, right? Right. You can change things, you know, like like oh, we right. talked about the one year where the uh, some human services appropriations were left off. So you can say, "Oh, this was left off. We want to add twenty five hundred dollars for this." Or, or let's say nobody's running for Paul's seat, and then the day before somebody somebody decides they want to run for it, they can stand up at town meeting day and have their five minutes of fame and get up and talk and mm -hmm. and you can vote that person in rather than have to do a, a write-in campaign that like like me for instance i did the school board write-in campaign and i didn't get enough votes right <laughs> so you know what i mean so then you have to do like an appointee thing so it's i mean there's a lot of pros and cons to it but um so the the rest about cannabis is on the bottom here is i picked the question shall the town of beth authorize cannabis retailers because the other one says the legislation says, or you can vote, shall the town authorize retail portions of integrated licensee operations in town? But they also tell you at the bottom, this is the advice from BLT, BLCT, <laughs> Vermont League of Cities and Towns, that voting on an integrated license isn't necessary. And technically, they're only for medical cannabis establishments already in place. Therefore, if the town wants to allow retail cannabis only, in portions of integrated licensee establishments, it should use the second model. But it, it's basically saying that when the town votes on allowing retail cannabis operations, the allowance is going to extend broadly to both retailers and retail portions of the integrated licensee operations anyway. So it seemed like that was the question that you'd want to ask. And obviously, if this passes, 
then the town doesn't have to, but you should establish a cannabis control board. And whoever's on that is going to have to have some idea about zoning because we've discussed this, Rick and I, um, because Rick's, (laughs) Rick is also the chair of the planning commission and, um, and the cannabis board. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, yeah, we talked about, because you can't zone, we can't zone out cannabis. It can be basically cannabis retailers are allowed where retail operations are allowed. So, so that means like in the downtown area yep. or, mm-hmm. oh, gotcha. So if you didn't have a retail, if you weren't zoned retail for the top of Macintosh, you can't put cannabis there because they do have to follow because hmm. you can't zone it out, but they have to follow existing zoning regulations. So right now, um, hmm. you know, you can have retail operations in core the village. And Hamlet, maybe Hamlet. Maybe yeah so just so people know um i see Cass is on um did you have something you wanted to add Cass? justin can we make yeah. justin talk yes we can make just you can make just <laughs> whatever you want Cass. well we are actually interested in maybe trying to make a portion of our richardson store into a cannabis retail store um okay. that was you know, I'm not really sure what we needed to do. Obviously, it sounds like it's already going to be on the warning for the town meeting. So that's great. And I guess I would want to attend any of the informational meetings that we're going to have before this as well. Um, I don't know. Yeah, sure. Just what check that would this. Entail. Just check the select board agenda. Um, we post them on you know the Friday, pretty the Friday before the meetings, and and we'll probably. But once we do this, we actually it'll be both February it'll be, meetings. It'll be bigger. Yeah, it'll probably be both meetings. Okay. In February. Yep. And sometimes we have one off the schedule a little bit if we feel like the budget is a big item or or some other item is a big discussion. But um, if I remember, I have uh, both your email addresses. I'll try to remember to send that to you directly. Um, but if not, Great. certainly just call the office, ask Kelly, look at our website. But um, yeah, because they've changed the the rules uh, significantly. Obviously, there's some towns, I think Randolph did the book opted in right away i think that maybe they have an establishment i heard a rumor that they had somebody opening up and um yeah and so we obviously if you're going to grow cannabis that's a different permit that the town doesn't Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's a state because we have had one of those issued already um and that goes directly to the cannabis control board if the town does not have its own local control cannabis control board then it we leave it up to the state to decide and they certainly have no idea of our zoning so i don't know how that would work out but um so it i will say this it's i have attended a training and i have another webinar for another one. it is confusing as anything so hopefully by the next meeting we'll have a little more information because the cannabis control board got behind because of covid and i think they've kind of been trying to play catch up with the rules but Certainly my advice for you, if you want to, if you're considering opening is reach out to them or Google them, they have a website and they have a bunch of information and, and, um, you would need a zoning permit, um, for sure. But, um, other than any other state regulations, I would, you know, check with them because we're just honestly just not as informed yet. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it passes, I guess we'll be gearing up. (laughs) <laughs> so, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I'll try to remember to let you guys know. And if not, just keep an eye on the website or check with Kelly. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. If I understand what we, what you just said a few minutes ago, if it is already zoned for retail, then that's where the position, that's where the store, the store has, or the retail outlet has to be. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because you can't zone it out. Um, but you can limit it to that which is already zoned. Yep. For retail. Okay. Yeah, it's a, Got it. It's an interesting caveat for sure. Yeah. So, all right. So I'm going to remove number 17. I will label the cannabis article one, and then I will add 18 that Rick pointed out on Friday that I'd missed the other business mm-hmm. that we put at the end. And um, yeah, I had put 
this language on the bottom was really just obviously I'm going to delete it. I just wanted you all to read it to understand what cannabis retailer means, um, integrated licensee. So we'll have to come up with some information to maybe do some front porch forum posts, uh, Facebook posts, kind of get some information together so people can understand what the cannabis vote is or is not. Obviously, it doesn't allow people to write. It's just like you can't drink on Main Street and open container law. It's the same thing. You know, it's not just because you're allowing retail doesn't mean you're allowing people to use up, you know, on Main Street and stuff. So, so it, it looks non <laughs> things that are in the warning. I see four that are would not necessarily be in every town meeting. There's the library vote, the recreation facility, the Australian ballot for officers, and cannabis. Yep. yep. So we would want to, in notifying people of the discussion times, I think we would want to say these are four items that will be coming that are distinct to this meeting so that people know that they can come to those meetings and share what they want to say. Mm -hmm. And just remember, we haven't 100% declared that the recreational facility will right. be. Right, yeah, I, we I just, just don't know I'm yet. Saying, I'm Placeholder just, in case I'm we need it. thinking out loud yeah. in terms of what we... Yeah. How we promote these informational meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, we'll get, just looking we usually get the sample out. warning out ahead of time. Yeah. That's so all that'll be out there. for, for yeah. people to see. And yeah, I mean, we talk about it just like our put everything else. It's and, cool. and, and, and then normally, you know, between Rick and I, we'll do a pretty good job of navigating people through it. And um, I'm, I'm simply wanting before we get, when we announce those special meetings, mm -hmm. yep, that we call people's attention to those four items or three items, whichever yep. turns out, yep. because I think otherwise we get people showing up at the information or at town meeting okay. saying, "Well, I didn't know you were going to do that. You're going to get all that." <laughs> exactly. There's only going to be four people at this informational meeting. I so. understand that. I, <laughs> yeah, I, you forget. I people simply are... want to say, "Let's yeah. be as yeah. open." People... And in the past, we have um, boss. In the in the past at the informational meetings too, we've also gone through the warning each time. Yeah, yeah. yeah people yeah, understand yeah, what's I, on that warning I too. Just, yep. Yeah, you know. All right. All right. Anything else on the warning? Pretty good there. Town manager's report. Anything left there? So um, I did. We had I should have guess brought up during the budget, but um, we had talked about. Uh, I told you I was looking at MVP versus or Blue Cross Blue Shield versus MVP, trying to compare the same. But the policy that um, that I was trying to compare to compared to what we have is not the same coverage. So mm -hmm. I think it's hard in this. Thank you, Rick. I'll send you the draft again. Good night. Thank you. Um, that it's, I think it's difficult in this climate week to find staff to cut benefits for existing staff. Um, so I did, there would have, I looked at the numbers to see if there'd be savings in a premium, but the coverage just isn't the same. So I'm not comparing apples to apples. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know that I'd done that. Um, uh, I also received a, a letter today from Mike Tarrant, uh, which is Brian Wright's attorney. It's, it got forwarded to our attorney. So that's just sitting out there the right now, Eugene. And um, I'll, I'm sure I'll have more for that in the to you, my pen. I'll have more for that in the future. Um, but that just came in today. So, uh, oh, I have an I have the about uh, the town report dedication. I'll just send you an email about that. That's it. Can can AJ make sure that when he does his ride along program that that's um during the daytime between certain yeah, hours so right. that you can attend that. Yeah, you can. Because <laughs> I tell you, it's I not know. gonna be two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, oh, you got the two o'clock. Yeah. I guess <laughs> I'll go along, keep him awake, right? That's right. Yeah. So, Lindley, Lindley's not here, so we can nominate her for the two a.m. shift. Thank you. Um. Yeah, that's right. So, it, but I saw that I was like. 
it's tough because it like, is tough. It always snows like at night. Yeah, I mean, true. you know, I mean, very <laughs> seldom is it during the daytime. I know. I've actually I'm working and stuff like how how you put that together. But but if you haven't done one before, I've actually done a, a ride along with a road crew before. I've also done a ride along with the chief of police before. So that's always a that's an eye opener mm. right there. But you know, but it was really interesting to do a ride along with a road crew, um, because I picked the steepest route, the whole thing, which is what AJ is offering, and he's got this and it's amazing. I did it in a snowstorm and that is such a huge windshield and how is the term snow blindness? I mean, I don't know sure. how. Yeah, when you, when you see the snow hitting. Oh the, my uh, god! And uh, shield and lights and. Yeah, it's it's really crazy, yeah. and um, but it was really interesting too. And I was I've always been so glad that I had, had done that. So, but certainly reach out to AJ. Um, and he really wants, he's really wants people to do that. And I just really think it was uh is a good thing obviously we have another seasonal employee curtis so if you see curtis he was out on the sidewalk yeah. cloud today so, slide, yeah, yeah so say hi um yeah yep and um where is he from either sharon or royalton i'm sorry curtis, his, i don't remember his face looked familiar and then when i just read curtis berry i'm like that yeah there was you know there's a bunch of berries in the royalton sharon area yep so yeah, I don't know if he's related is, to that, yes, or... he is. Right. And um, so what else? So you saw the hours that were going to be closed for the holiday, and then mm -hmm. oh, DWSRF. So that's a good. We're I'm working. We're working with Amy of DWSRF. She took over for Ashley, and that is actually promising. Now, um, there was some. They had some data that was inaccurate, so it looks like we're. So we're definitely on for the lead subsidy. And it looks like we should be getting the 40 year, you know, 0% interest. Plus there may be a disadvantaged subsidy, which we didn't think we were going to qualify for. Plus what? Everything they owe us from Bennington. Yeah. <laughs> right? right? Exactly. So all in, put it in that right. seat right there. So all, we are all our Bennington money. Yeah. So those numbers are looking definitely looking better. So I was very happy to meet Amy and um of course, they'll tell you what you want to hear until you well, build the project, and they're like, "Well, I'll just let you know." Don't forget it. Yeah, she's actually that doesn't look qualified anymore. She was very good. So, um, so but, so retired or left exactly. But I have to get them the some more information because they want to see our draft budget for the water department for next year. So, needless so, to say, I haven't um, there yet. so when will we see the information in regards to that phase two water line? pieces if we are going to put that soon i mean we're doing the easements right now they're working on the final design we just added we richard had got an estimate received an estimate for um a lot of work that needed to be do with the, done at the reservoir so we wanted to add that to the bond um so we gave that information to them so soon so was there an easement from dick adams yes so he's passed away so. i had it signed while tim was still alive he asked okay. me to get it taken care of and i did but if that property sells easement still good easement, easement still, still carries yep okay so that easement is all taken care of and then i'm working on i think i have three or four other easements i'm doing now i just discussed one with renee turgeon today and um there's a couple others so a lot less easements this time than last time so um so yeah so we're moving forward so once i have something more for you, we're just kind of trying to figure out the financing and all that so yes town meeting hopefully we will be voting our phase two if it doesn't work out then then we'll probably do it in you know april or may or something i think it's it's on the warning march 7th yeah um yes tuesday 7th yep so that's it all right select board meeting minutes from 28 any amendments to that are we good to approve it as written lindley's giving you the thumbs up okay, just... okay moved by paul lindley second lindley seconded, lindley seconded. Lindley seconded. all in favor <laughs> Aye. Aye. okay any other communications it's the so I gave the you pack. the recreation information, um, just mm -hmm. so you would have that. Um, but again, I don't know what 
I mean, you can see my cost estimate that we actually had a good estimate for the 1400 square feet, which would have made them short $53,000. But um, once I cut that to 700 thinking, you know, and like I said, I just dropped 8,000 off the excavation. I put in big letters guesstimate only. I didn't ask Dylan to go back and redo that. Mm. They would only be 300 bucks shy, but yeah. if they are still wanting to do 1400, they're 53,000 shy. So, and I gave all that information to them yeah. and all the members of the rec committee and Ellie and um, yeah, we're going back to yeah, I, I, did it, I did it for Ellie. Yeah, she asked I, when I got here if I could do something for mm -hmm. her. So now I update it every year on a regular basis. And she's actually very helpful. She was, there was something in there that was inaccurate and she pointed that out to me. Yes. So it was good. Sounds good. So remember, we meet Monday again mm. at 630. At 6.30. <laughs> I, will, I will be here. I'll be skirting over here. we have a game Monday. I'll be running right from here to there. Should be over by then. Okay. Hopefully. Well, well good okay. luck. We okay. hope you win. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't hear. Okay, Paul. Oh. Sounds good. Hi. There you go. <laughs> All right. See you later. Bye, Lindley. Bye, Bye Owen. Thank you.